and I'm delighted uh, that we can kick off with uh, Sebastian and Faye. So take it away, y'all. I think there are some slides you'd like to share. Cool. Thank you. All right. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. <clears throat> um, this is actually a slightly modified presentation that Faye and I already gave at the previous Inner Source Commons Summit. However, we, uh, we tweaked it a little bit to make it even more applicable to practitioners, like to people that may, might even want to write uh, patterns themselves. So a bit of um, intro. So what is an inner source pattern? So I don't know, maybe you've already read a pattern or maybe you're completely new to this. So you just want to learn about this. So just in introducing this once. Uh, pattern is a template for solving an inner source problem. So any type of problem related to inner source that you might have in your organization could likely be described um, as a pattern. Now, a pattern that sounds a bit like a mouthful, sounds like it's something complicated. Uh, at the end of the day, how this looks like, well, it is a text document uh, and it is a fairly strictly structured text document. So on the right-hand side here on the screen, you see it has a title, there's something called a padlet, that's a summary, there's a problem description and so on and so forth, right? But when we're talking about a pattern from now on going forward, you can really just think about it as a, it's a document. Now, where does this format come from? Why do we have such a strict format for describing these patterns? Well, the Inner Source Commons community was always about sharing experiences. And there were many people coming together from various different industries and various different companies, countries, different sizes of companies, and so on and so forth. But still, they all wanted to share experiences with each other. Uh, oftentimes, they were sharing these experiences uh, when we still had in-person meetings some time ago. Uh, they were sharing them um, just as stories, right? So they were saying the following thing happened at my company and we found that this thing here has worked and this other thing didn't work. However, then many practitioners had the problem that they needed to figure out, well, does this story that has been told, does it actually apply to my organization? So it might sound like an interesting solution, but do I actually have the same problem, right? Or am I just using somebody else's? Uh, I'm assuming I have somebody else's problem, so to say. So that's how the pattern structure was created and all the building blocks of that you see here. I'll just quickly mention them, mention them once. So it really all starts with the problem here in the middle. So something that you're observing at your company that you want to solve. Um, and then there's a certain context that you're living in. The context could be your company size, how your teams are structured, maybe how you're spread over continents, how your managers are incentivized, all sorts of things. So the context would be things that are in place in your organization and they are not changeable before the pattern goes into place. Then there are also the forces. So things that you also have in your company, but you could actually, you can change them. And maybe even as part of implementing the given pattern, you wanna change something related to one of these sources. Uh, forces, sorry. <laughs> and then, of course, there is the solution, right? So the solution is one solution to the given problem that you are describing. And that can be as specific as you like, right? So the solution could contain videos, flowchart, pictures, but also just text, right? Just describing how you're solving the given problem. And then last but not least, you have the resulting context where you're basically saying, if you have the following problem, and you're living in this given context and forces, and you're applying this solution, then we hope that after some time afterwards, you would end up in this resulting context, right? So that's basically how your initial context is being changed through the given, given solution. And that's the structure of a pattern. Uh, and as I said earlier, well, it sounds a little bit maybe dogmatic, or it's certainly very uh, structured, but the idea behind that is that it allows you to compare uh, the, the solution that somebody else has described to your own organization. And with that, how do we actually find relevant patterns for my organization, Faye? 
Thanks, Sebastian. So inner source adoption is not an overnight thing. It is more like a journey. You don't necessarily see the benefits of that overnight. And that's why with all these challenges or problems you might run into, you might think, how can I get help? How do I find the relevant patterns for my org? Just like Sebastian mentioned, those patterns are distilled from stories from the inner source community members. They have done this, they have seen the benefit, and that's why they capture those patterns to help the other community members. Next slide, please. So we actually have a patterns book. It has the most mature patterns. All of those patterns have been proved in at least one or more companies. And you can find the proven instance from the pattern there. Next slide, please. The book is located on the internet. If you go to the URL patterns.innersourcecommons.org, you will be able to get to the book. The book actually has 20 mature patterns and it is free. So you don't have to spend any money to purchase that. Now with the book of 20 patterns, you might be wondering, how do I find the one that matters to me? Maybe you have a project you see that has huge inner source value. A lot of people can benefit from that, but you don't see enough um, contribution or usage of the pattern. So is there a pattern that can help you with that scenario? Next slide, please. There are two ways to find the patterns and navigate for, uh, from them. So the first way is you can click on the table of contents. You can see this is a list of the summary for each pattern. By reading through each pattern summary, you will get an idea of what kind of problem it solves and see whether that's applicable to you. And if you look at the core team pattern here, it mentions even when inner stores project is widely needed, the contributions and usage are hindered because the project is difficult to work with. So, wow, that's the pattern that could help you, the core team pattern. So that's the first way to find a pattern that could help your situation. Next slide, please. The second way is we also provide a mind map to explore the patterns. Um, on the left side, you can see there's an explore patterns button, click on that, it will take you to a mind map. This mind map categorizes patterns based on the different phases of inner source program, from the beginning of inner source program to adoption when there are multiple projects, and then to grow and all the way to scale when you're trying to get inner source programs across all organizations in your company. So if you click on this uh, picture, it will enlarge and make it more visible. You can see in the inner source program at the adoption phase, there are many different challenges. The technical challenges, uh, including quite a few entries there. And you can see one for the technical challenges, project is difficult to contribute to and use. The pattern corresponding to that challenge is core team. So that's the second way for you to find a pattern that would solve your problem and help your situation. Next slide, please. Now you go to the list of the patterns on the left and click on the patterns entry, uh, the core team entry. That will take to the detailed content of this pattern. As special mentioned, you can see the title, the padlet, detailed description of the problem, context, and the solution, and also a proven instance to show which company has used these patterns and proven it has been helpful. So that's how you can navigate uh, across the 20 mature patterns in the book to find one that helps your situation. Back to you, Sebastian. Excellent. Thanks, Faye. Um... But there are even more uh, patterns that are not that mature yet. So you can also take a look at our GitHub repository that contains a lot of drafts that people are uh, developing right now. So ideas for patterns that companies have. 
uh, and actually uh, later in the session today we'll talk about one such draft. Um, this is where you find the repository. Uh, it's called Inner Source Patterns under the Inner Source Commons organization. <clears throat> and if you are scrolling down in there, you'll find a whole list of initial draft patterns that you can already use if you like, or you can also ask questions about and contribute to. Now, how do I get started? Like if you practically want to do things with uh, patterns. So there are various ways how you can uh, benefit from the patterns and um, contribute to the community. So the first one, you can just ask an inner source or patterns question in our inner source patterns Slack channel. So that's typically a really good way to engage with the community. Uh, remember, it's all governed under the Chatham house rules, so people will not say, oh, I've heard Sebastian say this stupid thing, <laughs> and I wish he didn't say that. Um, so people will not refer to you by name and will not mention your companies or anything like that outside of the, of the Slack channel. So that's one way. Uh, another way is actually you can, if you are into writing, um, you could actually try to describe the challenge that you are facing as a donut pattern. Now, wait a second, I haven't actually told you what a donut is. Um, I think, I suspect it's an American that invented this, <laughs> this idiom for us in the, in the inner source commons. But it's basically, it's a pattern that doesn't have a solution yet, right? So it has this hole in the middle, just like a donut. Uh, so you could actually describe everything, like the situation you have in your company, the context forces problem, even the resulting context that you're looking for, and you just don't know how to get there. Uh, and we found that oftentimes that's actually a really useful way to think through a problem, even if you don't have the um, solution yet. But there are even more ways to participate. You can just, when you're reading patterns, you can just fix a typo or that type of thing in a, in a pattern. And that will, that might get you into a conversation with the, with the pattern author, for example. Uh, if you're using a given pattern, like you're reading something and either you've used it because you found the pattern in our book, or it just happened that you kind of reinvented the same pattern in your organization which is a good thing because it speaks for the pattern and you could add your company to the list of known instances in the pattern because again that's proving the point that the pattern is mature and stable because we see uh, we see the solution being used uh, in different companies across the industry and last but not least well if you have found a solution to an inner source problem then of course we would love for you to share your solutions with us in the form of a, of a fully spelled out pattern. But as you see, I tried to order them from very simple to a little bit harder and also very little work to a lot of work. Um, so hopefully you can, you can find your own ways to, to get engaged with the inner source patterns and the community. And that's it for the intro on patterns. You find contact information from Faye and myself here. And we are of course happy to, to answer any questions at the very end in the in the Q&A. Thank you.